Okay, so here's another um, flame. I just loaded in, and again, I might just show you load flame, and you go and pick whichever one you want. And as you do, and you click on one, you'll see a little preview here. And depending on how complex it is, it might take a tiny little, little bit of time to just uh, render up a preview like that. Now, here's a, a flame I created earlier. So to just have a look at what the camera does, we have control over things like roll. You can either drag these things or you can double click put in values. In my case now it's slightly sluggish because of the fact that I'm also doing a recording and the machine I'm doing this on, the uh, laptop, uh, was purchased back in 2004 so it's not exactly screaming fast anymore. Now you can change your pitch. So you can kind of do all sorts of interesting kind of transformations by just changing your viewpoint. and. Yo. So we can rotate the actual fractal around. And now we got some interesting kind of formations you know that we couldn't actually see earlier. Uh, might change the pitch back a little bit to maybe something like uh I don't know, say about something like that. Okay, now perspective can be changed as well so you can increase it to get more sort of dramatic effects and uh, all of these things are things that you just really just grab hold and or type in some new values and see how it affects the actual look of it camera distance can be changed as well center X and Y now that's fairly important because in many cases you might want to kind of just pan around to get a right kind of uh, look of the actual image within the viewport. Now as you can see here I'm actually pulling towards the left and that means that I'm actually moving the camera that way. Now I can go up and down in the viewport with the Y axis and again you just work out if you go to the right you're going upwards in the viewport and if you go to the left, you go downwards in the viewport of the actual result that you're seeing there. Zoom, of course, is very important. Zooming in. Now you'll see a lot more close-up what's going on. Or if you want more of your fractal to show, you just zoom in. Or zoom out, sorry. And there you have it. Now, I think we'll leave it around somewhere like that. Okay. Pixels per unit, depth of field. Now, depth of field is kind of interesting, if you, especially if you want a little bit of blur. You can use the blur shader for that as well. So you can kind of create a little bit of a f sort of a softer background type of uh, effect. So we kind of get a simulation of depth, which you can sort of see back here. Okay. Now I'm happy with that. So I'm going to go and do what we need to do next in order to get this saved up. Uh, either do a quick render first or if you're happy just render image normal or render image high quality. High quality is creating our high dynamic range uh, image HDR. takes a lot longer because we're using a much higher precision within the renderer to uh, render that image. And put it in there. Give it a name. And next thing you see is the render starts. So you basically just sit back and relax and wait for that to finish. The image is rendered and what happens next is it opens up the actual finalized image in its own little viewer and in this case here we go test the snapper Venus flytrap ping 1280 by 720 and it's viewing at 72% of its full size. And that's it for now.